Welcome to the CCNA 1 version 7 module 4 to 7 exam review. In this section, I will cover exam questions related to Ethernet concepts. These questions are real pass exam questions that may show up on your module 4 to 7 exam. If you have not watched the previous module 1 to 3 review, please check my YouTube channel for the previous section. Please keep in mind that I have covered extensively all the concepts that you need to know for your CCNA 1, CCNA 2, and CCNA 3 exams on my lecture series that are already posted to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about the exam questions that I'm covering today, please check the CCNA 1 Introduction to Networks. If you are also interested in the CCNA2 and CCNA3, which are the switching, routing, and enterprise network and security automation concepts, they are also posted onto my YouTube channel. Today, I will be going over the review questions related to this particular section of the CCNA1 curriculum. And again, if you want to learn a little bit of more in depth into where these questions are coming from or any concepts associated with that, I highly recommend you go back to the CCNA1 Introduction to Networks lecture series on my YouTube channel and watch them. So let's get started. Question number one, what is the purpose of the OSI physical layer? Controlling access to media, transmitting bits across the local media, performing error detection on received frames, exchanging frames between nodes over physical network media. You can either pause this video, I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. The answer to this question is transmitting bits across the local media. Because remember, if you recall your OSI model, it has the application presentation session, transport network, data link, and physical. The software, also known as the upper layers, includes the application presentation and session. Then we have the heart of the OSI layer, which is the transport layer. And then we have the hardware, which is include the network, data link, and physical. And you can see that the question is asking, what is the purpose of the physical layer? So we are interested in the physical layer of that structure, which is the, or the stack, which is the transmitting bits across the local media. Because the physical layer is the one that is responsible for the transmission of data into me mechanical or electrical signals, depending on the medium in which it's transmitting. For example, if you have a CAT5 or CAT6 cable, which would be copper wires, it could be light, for example, with the, uh, with the fiber optic layers. So send and receive, sending goes this way of the stack and the receive goes that way or from the bottom up. So that's what this first question is trying to get you to answer. The next question, question number two, what are two characteristic of fiber optic cable? So we are looking for two characteristic of fiber optic cable. So the answers include, it is not affected by EMI or RFI. EMI stands for electromagnetic radio uh, interference and RFI is radio uh, frequency interference. Each pair of cable is wrapped in metallic foil. It combines the technique of cancellation shielding and twisting to protect data. It typically contains four pairs of fiber optic wires. It is more expensive than UTP cabling. Again, if you want to pause this video, you can go ahead and think about it. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Only two of these answers are correct. So the correct answers would be, it is not affected by EMI or RFI, because remember, unlike electrical signal or where the electrons being traveled across a wire, it doesn't create any of that interference because it uses light. So it's not going to get affected by EMI or RFI because the fiber optic cables use light. 
and it is more expensive than UTP cabling because fiber optic cables um, uh, are you know harder to manufacture compared to UTP uh, metal metal based uh, cabling. So those are the two answers to that question. Question number three: Refer to the graphic. What type of cabling is shown? STP, UTP, coax, or fiber? Again, I will give you a warning before I <laughs> show you the answer, unlike the previous question. But you need to understand as what is the difference between STP, UTP, coax, and fiber. So we know this is not fiber because this is clearly type of a metal cabling. Fiber cables don't have multiple strands like this way because it has plastic coating. So it's not fiber, it's not coax because coax only have a metal pin in the center. So it has to be either STP or UTP. Now, the only way you can differentiate with the STP and UTP is if you understand how the manufacturing process of STP and UTP uh, works and how those standards are different from one from the other. So if you already know the answer, that's great. But just for your information, UTP stands for unshielded twisted pair cable. You can see from these pairs that they're twisted. Remember, STP is not twisted, UTP is twisted. So by just looking at this twisted pair, we know the answer has to be UTP. So it is unlikely that it is gonna be STP cable, so the best answer here would be UTP. So again, you need to know this for your exam. Question number four, which switching method uses the CRC value in a frame. Which switching method uses the CRC value in a frame? Cut through, fast forward, fragment free, store and forward. Again, recall from your lecture notes or uh, my lectures that I have already posted on my YouTube channel. What is CRC value in a frame? Now I'm gonna give you the answer and I'm gonna give you an explanation for that. So the answer to this question is basically store and forward. So that's what the CRC uh, value in the frame, um, you know, the, so the switching method that uses CRC frame is a store and forward. The reason for that is when the store and forward switching method is used, the switch receives the complete frame before forwarding to the destination. So switch waits until it has the complete frame before it starts sending uh, that frame out. So when the, it doesn't like start sending the frame out as soon as it receives it, it wait for entire frame to get in there before it starts sending to the destination. That means the cyclic redundancy check, which is stand for CRC, CRC stand for cyclic redundancy check, can be done during that time. So the part of the trailer is used to determine if the frame has to be modified during that transit. So that can only be done if you are using store and forward method. If you use the cut through switching it's not going to work because you don't have, in the cut through switching, you don't have the time to check the CRC value, which is, which is, has to have the complete frame. In contrast, however, if you look at the cut through switching, that will forward the frame once the destination layer two address is read. So even before the entire frame gets into the switch, it starts forwarding right away as soon as it realizes where are the layer two addresses? So the two types of cut through switching methods are the fast forward and fragment free. So if the cut through switching cannot be used for C cannot be used with the CRC value, then the fast forward and fragment free automatically get eliminated from these answers. So if you if I were to write this exam question, that's how I think in my head. I look at this question and goes like, oh wait a second, this is CRC value in a frame. So that means this cannot be cut through switching and that eliminate also these two answers because fast forward and fragment free are two types of cut through switching that basically start transmitting the information as soon as the destination layer two address is read. So it has to be 
store and forward method and that is the correct answer because cyclic redundancy check CRC value can only be read when you are using the store and forward method of switching. So that's the answer to question number four and that's a explanation I can give it for you. Again, if you want more in-depth detail, check my lecture series that I have already posted. Question number five. What action will occur if a host receiver frame with a destination MAC address it does not recognize? So in other words, the host receive a frame, destination MAC address is missing or it doesn't have that information. So the answers could be the host will discard the frame, the host replies to the frame, uh, free, fr to the switch with its own IP address, the host forwards the frame to all other hosts or the host returns the frame to the switch. Again, I will give you a couple of seconds to think about this. The answer to this question is the host will discard the frame because hosts have no idea what the Mac destination MAC address is going to be. So it's just going to simply discard the frame. Why that is, again, you can watch my previous lectures. Move on to question number six. Which type of UTP cable is used to connect a PC to a switch port. In other words, which type of untwisted pair cable that we can use to connect a switch, um, uh, you know, a, a PC to a switch port. Console cable, rollover cable, crossover cable, straight through cable. Again, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. This is a very easy question. Shouldn't take that long. So we can eliminate a couple of these uh, things right away, one of these things right away, console cable. So it can be console cable because that's not a UTP cable. So we left it rollover cable, crossover cable, and straight through cable. The answer to this question is straight through cable. The reason for that is the rollover cable is a Cisco preparatory cable used to connect a router or a switch to a console port. So console cable can get eliminated right away. Rollover cable, if you know the switch co Cisco uh, study material, you already know it's, it's a special Cisco proprietary cable that used to connect a router or switch to a, a console port. So that can be that. The straight through cable, also called the patch cable, is usually used to interconnect host to a switch and a switch to a router. A crossover cable is used to interconnect similar devices together, for example, the switches and routers. Uh, so interconnect, yeah, similar devices. So it has to be the straight through cable. Straight through cable can be used unsimilar, not similar devices. So the PC to a switch going to be a straight through cable. Question number seven, which is a multicast MAC address? Again, this is something you should know from your lecture notes. A multicast MAC address should be able to uh, you know, you should be able to pick out easily out of uh, other MAC addresses on this list. I'm not going to read out all the MAC addresses uh, for the answers. Think about it. What is a multicast MAC address? Then the answer would be obvious. So to give you a little bit of background information, as defined in the IEEE 802.3 standard, the least significant bit is the most significant octet of a MAC address uh, is the multicast bit, right? So the multicast MAC address is a spe has a special value begin with a certain hexadecimal values. So if you look at all of these items, it should jump out to you. It has to be the C, A, B, C, the third answer, because that special value according to IEEE 802.3 standard for the multicast address, it has to start with 01005E and that's what we see, 001005E. In another way, I can explain this using the Cisco textbook for CCNA1. They have this diagram in the textbook and it shows in this example, the destination MAC address and the destination IP address are both multicast addresses because again, this thing is starting out with that specific, you know, configurations of the MAC, MAC addresses, see? This is 01005E, 01005E. And the, the, so the, that is a indicative of a MAC address that is part of a multicast MAC addresses. Again, if you don't know this, 
you should go back to your study material. This is something you should know like back of your hand. Question number eight. What is one advantage of using the cut through switching method instead of store and forward switching method? Has a positive impact on bandwidth by dropping most of the invalid frames. Makes a fast forwarding decision based on the source MAC address of the frame. Has a lower latency appropriate for high performance computing applications. Provide flexibility to support any mix of Ethernet speeds. So again, I have already explained what's the differences between cut through switching and the other options in my previous question. So I'm just going to give you a few seconds for you guys to think and I'll provide you the answer next. So here we go. The answer is it has a lower latency appropriate for high performance computing applications. Because remember the cut through switching as soon as it sees the destination MAC address, it just start forwarding the information. Question number nine. What OSI physical layer term describe the process by which one wave modifies another wave? Now, one thing I want to mention here is a lot of you guys see this question and go like, oh my God, I need to recall my entire OSI stack or OSI, you know, layer stack, right? You don't need to, you just need to know, you know, what OSI physical layer term describe the process by which the wave modified another wave. The, the, the answers, if you look at it, it's modulation, IEEE, EIA, TIA, yeah. Well, <laughs> you can, basically answer this question in few seconds. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Even though the question mentioned OSI layer here, because it is part of the OSI layer, how we define these terms, you don't even need to know exactly what are in the stack of OSI layer stack in this particular question. You will eventually in the few, next few questions, but for this question, you don't even need to know the entire OSI layer. You just need to know, you know, what process modify you only thing here really important is which one you know modify the uh, wave the answer to this question is modulation because modulation is what modulate or modify the wave so that another medium can read it now if you remember the osi model this is the osi model that's great right we have the application presentation a session transport network data and physical layer and you know we have software layers and then the hardware layers and we know what all of these layers do but if you look at this question you don't even need to know you know the osi layers at all you just need to know uh, basically you know in in here somewhere in here that uh, a a um, signal being modified or wave be modified and what term we use to describe it. So answer is modulation. Again, you should know this, you should know SI model, but you should be able to get that question right even if you forget uh, during your exam, your OSI uh, model. So keep that in mind. Just because of you see OSI, in other words, in the question doesn't mean you need to know the OSI model entirely. Question number 10. What does the term attenuation means in data communication? Attenuation. So if you have taken any physics classes, any math classes, any geology, geophysics classes, the signal attenuation is something that you may be familiar with. Now, I already gave you the answer in a way. So let's look at the answers we have here. The loss of signal strength as uh, distance increases, the time for signals to reach its destination, leakage of signals from one cable pair to another, strengthening of signals by networking devices. Now, here's the thing. Even if you forget what attenuation is, look at the English definition. If you are a first, if your first language is English or you have studied CCNA, since you are, you are studying it in English medium, you should know what attenuation means by just dictionary definition. What does the attenuation mean? Well, attenuation basically means some kind of uh, decrease or a loss, right? So all of these answers are very similar except one. So I can eliminate right away strengthening of the signal by networking devices. This is how I think in my head. And then I left with these three answers. Now, 
you may already know the answer, so I'm gonna just give you the answer now. So the data is transmitted on a copper cable on electric using electrical pulses, right? Uh, so when that happens, the further signal travel, it more it start to deteriorate. That deterioration is basically a loss of signal strength as the distance, in, distance increase. This is what we call attenuation. Some people call it signal attenuation, which is a very common other term here. So what does the term attenuation means in data communication? A loss of signal strength as distance increases. Question number 11. What action will occur if a host receiver frame with a destination MAC address of all Fs in it? So everything in the MAC address, uh, every single section has F in it. So the answers are the host will process the frame, the host returns the frame to the switch, the host replies to the uh, switch with its own IP address, the host forward the frame to all hosts. Again, if you have taken my lectures before, you already know the answer to this. Just think about it. So to give an explanation for this question, when the Ethernet broadcast address is this, you know, the, the Ethernet broadcast address is distinguished by having all bits set to one, right? So such as if you have a MAC address that have all Fs in it, that address then can be used uh, you know to you know to determine that information so in this case because everything is having all f's in it because broadcast address is distinguished by having all the bits set to one the host will process the frame so the answer to this question is host will process to process the frame so you need to understand what these f's means and if you don't remember go check out my previous videos question number 12 what OSI physical layer term describes the amount of time, including delays, for data to travel from one point to another? Here is another question that associated with the OSI layers, which you don't need to know the OSI layer to answer the question. So the answers include the latency, fiber optic cable, air, copper cable. This is such an easy question because Cisco literally gave you the answer to this question. Because if you just read the answers, three of these answers makes absolutely no sense. So the answer to this question is latency. It shouldn't take that long for you to figure out because our question is asking what OSI layer is term described? The amount of time including delays for a data to travel from one point to another. So that is latency, late, late time. Think about that. So. That's the answer. And rest are basically medium, such as the fiber optic, copper, and air. Some of the questions are easy like that. They give you the answer right out. <laughs> Question number 13. When the store and forward method of switching is in use, what part of the Ethernet frame is used to perform an error check? Recall, there was a similar question a few minutes ago that I have already went over. So the answers include protocol type in the header, source MAC address in the header, destination MAC address in the header, CRC in the trailer. Remember, I already covered this in my previous question. The answer to this, uh, uh, this question is CRC header. When the store and forward me uh, method of switching is used, the CRC trailer is the one that we use to make sure that the errors of those frames are checked. Remember the fast forward switching uh, cannot use a CRC or cut through switching in other words, cannot use CRC because it doesn't have that timing enough to do that check. Question number 14. What type of communication rule would best describe CSMA slash CD? First of all, you need to know what is CSMA and CD to answer this question. So make sure when you go into the exam, you know these terms and acronyms or uh, you know abbreviations, otherwise you might get stuck. CSA, CSMA slash CD means carrier sense multiple access collision detection. Carrier sense multiple access collision detection. If you know that part, you already know how to answer this question. So the answers are access method, flow control, message encapsulation, message encoding. If you know what is CSMACD, 
which stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detection. The collision detection method basically give away the answer here, at least for me in my head, when I look at this question, the answer is access method. So the CSA M M CSMA slash CD uh, is best described as an access method. And this is described in IEEE 802.11 wireless uh, standard as well. So that's where it is coming from. Question number 15. What is the primary role of the physical layer in transmitting data on the network? What is the primary role of the physical layer in the OSI model in transmitting data on the network? Create the signals that represent the bits in each frame on the media. Provide physical addressing to the devices. Determine the path packets take through the network. Control data access to the media. Again, if you think about your OSI layers, the physical layer provide the means of what? That's the question pretty much asking. So the answer to this question is it creates the signals that represents the bits in each frame on the media. And again, if you understand the OSI model, it should be an easy question to answer. Here's another easy question. Refer to the graphic. What type of cabling is shown? Is it STP, UTP, fiber, or coax? Again, if you have done your labs or your Cisco labs, or if you have gone through the lab manual, you should already know the answer to this question. Look at the terminating end. And even if you look at these wires, actually, uh, the you know this is a typical color for this particular type of yellow is a typical color for this particular type of medium. And we all know the answer is fiber. So these are fiber cables. Question number 17, which switching method has the lowest level of latency? Cut through switching, store and forward switching, fragment free, fast forward switching. Again, think about it because two of these answers may be very close to each other, but they are different. So I'll give you the answer. So the answer is a fast forward switching because fast forward switching begins to forward the frame after reading the destination MAC address and resulting in the lowest latency ever. So in other words, as soon as the MAC address start uh, reading for the destination, it start fast forwarding, start working, start forwarding that information. The fragment free reads the first 64 bits before it's forwarding. Therefore, fragment free method do take a little bit longer to transmit that data. Store and forward on the other hand has the highest latency as it reads the entire um, you know the thing before it start forwarding. Both fragment free and fast forwarding types are type of cut through switching. So fragment fragment free and fast forwarding are part of cut through switching but this is the faster method of cut through switching compared to the fragment free so the answer would be fast forward. Question number 18. What makes fiber preferable to copper cabling for interconnecting buildings? You need to pick three advantages here associated with fiber as opposed to copper cabling in other words. Greater distance per cable run, lower installation cost, limited susceptibility to EMI and RFI, durable connections, greater bandwidth potential and easily terminated. Even if you did the previous few questions and you understand the concept behind fiber, already you know from some of these answers. So we need to pick three of these things. Now, I'm gonna give you the answers. So it's greater distance per cable run, limited susceptibility to EMI and RFI, electromagnetic radiation, radio frequency interference. I already explained those previously. Greater bandwidth potential. So the fiber optic cable, a tiny fiber optic cable can have a much higher bandwidth compared to a copper cabling. So those are the three answers. So you should know this by like back of your hand. Question number 19. What action will occur if a host receives a frame with a destination MAC address that it does not recognize? In other words, the host get a frame that it, ha it 
it doesn't know what the MAC, MAC address belong to what machine or what uh, you know network port. So the answers here could be the host will discard the frame, the host sends the frame to the switch to update the MAC address table, the host forwards the frame to the router, the host forwards the frame to all other hosts. So what happened if the host receiver frame that the destination MAC address is not recognized by the host? Think about it. One of the incorrect answers some of you may pick is the last one. The host forwards the frame to all other hosts. But the correct answer here is the host will discard the frame because hosts have no idea what this frame, where this frame is supposed to go. Question number 20. What OSI physical layer term describe the measure of the transfer of bits across med a medium over a given period of time? So we just want to know what term describe the measure of the transfer of bits across a medium over a given period of time. You don't even need to even know what OSI layer, physical layer means in terms of the OSI stack. You just need to know what the physical layer is doing here. Throughput, bandwidth, latency, and good bit. Throughput, bandwidth, latency, and good bit. I will give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Again, you don't need to know the entire OSI uh, layer stack here to answer this question. You just need to understand how packet switching works. So the answer is throughput. The term describe the best term that can describe the measure of the transfer bits across a medium, a measure would be the throughput. Question number 21. What is the function of the CRC value that is found in the CF, sorry, FS, FCS uh, field in a frame? Sorry about that. What is the function of the CRC value that is found in the FCS field of a frame? Again, if you remember, recall your, um, the frame, uh, you know, how we define the frame in packet switching, you should be able to answer this question. Answers could be the, to compute the checksum header for the data field in the frame, to verify the physical address in the frame, to verify the logical address in the frame, to verify the integrity of the receive frame. I kind of gave away the answer to this on my previous questions. The answer to this one is to verify the integrity of the receive frame. That's the purpose of a CRC value. Question number 22. Which frame forwarding method receives the entire frame and performs a CRC check to detect errors before forwarding the frame? Again, this is a similar question that we already have answered. The information here contains cut through switching, store and forward switching, fragment free switching, and fast forward switching. If you remember from our previous questions, this should be an easy question to answer. So remember the fast forward and the fragment free switching are what kind of switching? Those are cut through switching methods, right? So fast forward and fragment free are cut through switching. So all of these three are similar anyway. So it has to be store and forward. There's enough time for store and forward switching method to check that CRC value. Question number 23. During the encapsulation process, what occurs at the data link layer for a PC connected to a net, Ethernet network? So during the encapsulation process of packet switching, what, what occurs at the data link layer of the PC connected to an Ethernet network? A IP address is added, the logical address is added, the physical address is added, the port number is added. So what happens at the encapsulation process that occurs at the data link layer of the OSI model? So the answer to this question is the physical address is added. Remember that the Ethernet frame includes the source and destination physical addresses, right? The trailer includes the CRC value, which is the frame check sequence field, right? CRC. And um, to allow that the receive device to determine if the frame has been changed, right? If there are any errors during the transmission. So in this re recall from the previous question. So in this question, when they ask like what, what occurs at the data link layer, basically the physical address is added. That's where this process happened. Question number 24. A network team is comparing physical WAN topologies for connecting remote sites to a headquarters building. Which topology provides high availability and connects some, but not all, remote sites? In other words, we are looking for 
high availability but does not actually spend money connecting every single site so that it's really important that you understand that part from this question otherwise you're going to get this question wrong because the answers include mesh parcel mesh hub and spoke and point to point mesh parcel mesh hub and spoke point to point and if you look reread the question again a network team is comparing physical WAN topologies for connecting remote sites to a headquarters building. Which topology provides the high availability and connects some, this is very important, connects some but not all remote sites together, right? So if you didn't read the last part of this question, you're going to pick what? Mesh. But the answer to this question is partial mesh. It is partial mesh topology because it provides the high availability by interconnecting multiple remote sites, but does not require the connection between all remote sites because it's not a complete mesh, it is a partial mesh. It is cost effective and a lot of companies nowadays actually use partial mesh over mesh in order to increase their availability and uh, increase also redundancy as well. So keep that in mind. Read the question completely. Don't just go ahead and answer mesh, you know, in this situation. Question number 25, which media communication type does not require media arbitration in the data link? So which media communication type does not require media arbitration in the data link? Deterministic, half duplex, full duplex, control access. Deterministic, half duplex, full duplex, control access. Again, I'll give you a little bit of explanation or background in here but you should know this answer right away. So here I'm gonna give you the answer. Remember half duplex communication occurs when both devices can uh, transmit and receive the medium but cannot do it uh, simultaneously. That's what we call a half duplex, right? Full duplex communication occurs when both devices can transmit and receive the medium at the same time and therefore does not require arbitration. So full duplex, do not require arbitration because it's unlike a half duplex duplex it can do it at the same time half duplex communication is typically uh, you know uh, connection based whereas uh, uh, control or deterministic access is applied in technologies where devices can turn you know uh, turn to access the medium so basically the answer to this question is the full duplex that's where we do not need the arbitration process because half duplex require arbitration process because it can't communicate all at the same time. That's the answer. Question number 26. Which two fields or features does Ethernet examine to determine if a receive frame is passed to the data link layer or discarded by the network interface card or NIC? So which two fields or features in the Ethernet examine to determine uh, that to, on a receive frame uh, is passed to the data link layer or it should be discarded at that point. So we need two answers out of these uh, listed items here. So auto MDIX, uh, CEF, frame check sequence, minimum frame size, source MAC address. Again, you should know what MDIX is, <laughs> CEF is. Uh, if you know those things, you know what uh, the answer to this question. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. So you need two answers. Frame check sequence and minimum frame size. Frame check sequence and minimum frame size are the two fields or features that we use to examine if a receive frame is passed to the data link layer or not. Question number 27. What are two examples of the cut through switching method? two examples. So it includes the store and forward switching, fast forward switching, CRC switching, fragment free switching and QoS switching. Again, I have already given you the answer in my previous question. I'll give you a little bit of time to think about this question. And the answer should be the fast forward switching and the fragment free switching. I have already explained this multiple times. So I'm going to move on to the next question. Question number 28, what is contained in the trailer of a data link frame? What is contained in a trailer of a data link frame? Logical address, physical address, data or error direction. Again, I have already gone through this 
type of answer before my previous question you can see a pattern here cisco have a habit of asking similar concept in a different ways so the answer here should be the error detection because in layer 2 switch remember that you know they can do the error detection check question number 29 why are two standard of fiber used for a single fiber optic connection why are two standards of fiber used for a single fiber optic connection the answers include the two standards allow the data to travel for longer distance with uh, without degrading they prevent crosstalk from causing the interference on the connection they increase the speed at which the data can travel they allow full duplex connectivity so why are two standard of fiber use on a single fiber optic connection The answer to this question is it allows full duplex connectivity. So the answer to this question is it allows the full duplex connectivity. Question number 30. Which two statements describe features or functions of the logical link control sublayer in Ethernet standards? Again, you need to know your sublayers and you need to know your OSI model. Otherwise, you won't be able to answer this question. So the question is, which two statements describe features or functions of the logical link control sublayer in Ethernet standards? Answers include logical link control is implemented in software. Logical link control is specified in the IEEE 802.3 standard. The LLC sublayer adds a header and a trailer to the data. The data link layer uses LLC to communicate with the upper layer of the protocol suite. The LLC sublayer is responsible for the placement and retrieval of frames on the off on and off the media. Again, you should know this like back of your hand if you know what the OSI model uh, look like. The answer to this question is the logical link control is implemented in the software. It's not a hardware method. The data link layer uses LLC to communicate with the upper layers of the protocol suite. Later on this uh, uh, question set, uh, I will also go over a little bit of a diagram of the sublayers. Question number 31. What OSI physical layer term describes the capacity at which a medium can carry data? What OSI physical layer term describes the capacity at which a medium can carry data? Again, you don't need to know the entire OSI stack. You just need to know what term describe here best describe uh, what is it is asking for so the answers are bandwidth i triple e i i a t i a yeah again this is one of the easy question that cisco give you the answer right away by just reading the answers here one is unlike the other and it would be bandwidth so the answer to that question is bandwidth that is the capacity at which the medium can carry data question number 32 we have a diagram at the top right hand corner right here that has uh, four devices and three connections refer to this exhibit and the pc is connected to the console port of the switch all the other connections are made through fast ethernet links which type of utp cables can be used to connect the devices so in other words assuming we don't have auto mdx you should know what sorry M, auto mdix mdix you should know what it is what type of cable you should be using unless they specifically mention in cisco exam that they have mdix method used in here assume that we don't have that so those of you uh, you know uh, who don't know what mdix so mdi mdix is basically medium dependent interface or mdi crossover that's how the MDIX, MDIX is medium de dependent interface cross crossover pretty much. So what type of cable would you use here? What type of cable you use here? Would, what type of cable you use here? So here's the answers. I'm not gonna read all of them. So if you look at the diagram up here, what you need to understand is like devices and unlike devices. Remember a straight through cable is commonly used to interconnect a host to a switch and switch to a router, which in other words, straight through cables are used to connect what? Unlike devices. 
as opposed to crossover cables are used to interconnect similar or like devices together, such as a switch to a switch or router to a router, etc, etc. So if you look at the diagram up here, the answer has to be this one. It has to be the, this has to be a rollover cable because that is what a, a rollover cable is a, remember it's a, it's a Cisco proprietary special cable that be, can be used to connect a device, a switch to a computer. So that's a rollover cable. That's something that everybody should know in Cisco exam. So these two can be eliminated. So it has to be this one or this one. Then in number two, we have a switch and a router. It has to be a uh, straight through cable because we are connecting unlike devices. And then these are the same type of like devices. So it ha you can connect to a crossover cable. However, however, most modern devices, including Cisco switches and routers have auto MDIX, which allow you to use any type of cable between all of these connections, uh, especially these two connections, two and three connections, it doesn't matter whether it's a straight through or a crawl uh, sorry, straight through or a crossover, it will automatically adjust uh, accordingly. But for your exam purposes, assume that the auto MDIX is not enabled in that situation. Remember, unlike devices use straight through cables and like devices use uh, uh, crossover cable. Unlike devices such as uh, switch and a router use straight through uh, cables and unlike devices such as sorry like uh, unlike devices such as the switch and a router use a straight through cables and unlike de uh, de sorry like devices such as a router and a router use a crossover cable i know i bought your last sentence i'm going to repeat that again what you need to remember here is like devices use uh, crossover cables while unlike devices can use the straight through cable because Unlike devices can use that type. That's what the answer here. Question number 33. Which two functions are performed at the LSE sublayer of the OSI data link layer? Choose two. So the answers includes enables IPv4 and IPv6 to utilize the same network interface and media. Place information in the frame that identifies which network layer protocol is being used for the frame, integrates various physical technologies, implements a process to delim uh, delimit the fields within a layer two frame, controls the NIC responsible for the sending and receiving data on the physical medium. Now, you need to know your OSI model for this. You need to know your OSI stack and you also need to know the sub layers containing within the OSI stack. So the answer to this question is it enables the IPv4 and IPv6 to utilize the some net, sorry, same network interface and media and places the information in the uh, frame that identifies which uh, network layer protocol is being used for the frame. If you don't understand the OSI model, you're gonna get stuck on this question. Sorry, I didn't give you enough time to think about this question before I show you the answer. But uh, the reason why those answers are correct because of this structure uh, that we have on the OSI stack. We have the application presentation session, transport network, data link, and physical. And what the question is asking here is which two functions perform in the LLC sublayer of the data link, right? So we are interested in data link, but if you break down the data link further, uh, that you will see that, you know, the data link layer uh, have the LLC sublayer and uh, um, the, the LLC sublayer and the max sublayers. And that's why the, the answer to this question is these two for the question number 33. I have the sublayer showing on the next few slides, so give me two seconds. Uh, so this is question number 33. So let's move on to the question. Uh, oh no, I'll give me two seconds. Let me put it up on my screen. Oh, here you go. So if you if I go back again, uh, so the answer to is that. So remember, it is in the data link, but the data link get broken down. So if you go back forward right here, so data link get broken down in sublayers, the LLC sublayer and the max sublayer and the LLC sublay is what we are interested in. You should know this. You should know network layer is network layer, then the data link get broken down into LLC and MAC, and then we have the physical layer, 
and these P Mac, Mac sub layer and the PCK layer have IEEE standards and you should know this for like for your exam. Otherwise, a question like this, where it asks for the sub layer, you won't be able to answer by just knowing the OSI model, okay? So that's question number 33. And question number 34, what OSI physical layer term describe the physical medium for microwave transmission? Again, you don't need to know the entire stack like you need to know in the previous question. Just need to know, yeah, you know, what we do we what do we use for microwave? Yeah, good put, latency, and throughput. This is one of the easy questions that Cisco gives away. One answer is unlike the other compared to air, uh, to the uh, good put, to the latency, to the throughput. So the answer should be, yeah, it's a very easy question. So the next question is question number 35. In addition to the cable length, what two factors could interface with the communication carried over UTP cables? In addition to the cable length, what are the other two factors that you know interfere with the communication uh, of a UTP cable? Crosstalk, bandwidth, size of the network, signal modulation technique, electromagnetic interference. You need to know what crosstalk is. You need to know what bandwidth and what size of the network means and what all of these actually means. But what really important is you understand the concepts behind it. So it's a UTP cable, right? And what two factors could interfere? Well, I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. The answer to these questions are actually very straightforward. Electromagnetic interference and crosstalk are the two answers here. That makes sense to me right away. It jump out at you because EMI and RFI signals can uh, you know, distort and corrupt, uh, you know, signals. And we also know crosstalk is a disturbance caused by the electric, ma electronic, electric magnetic, uh, electromagnetic fields um, uh, within and outside the wire, especially when you have bundled up wires together. So these are the two answers to this question. Question number 36, which three basic parts are common to all fr uh, frame types supported by the data link layer. Which three basic parts are common to all frames types supported by the data link layer? Choose three. Header, type field, MTU size, data, trailer, CRC value. So we are looking for three parts that are common to all frame uh, types. Again, I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it. It's an easy question if you understand the concepts behind packet switching and the OSI model. So if you remember your packet switching and how the frames work, that the data link protocol is responsible in the OSI model for nick to nick communication within the same network, right? So although there are many different data link layer protocols that describe the data link frames, the each frame type has three basic parts. You must have three basic parts. Those includes the header, the data, and the trailer. So you need the header, data, and the trailer. That's what makes the three basic parts of all frame types that are supported by data link layer. Header, data, and the trailer. That's the answer. Question number 37. Again, this is something very easy to answer if you understand the question within a couple of minutes. Refer to the exhibit. Bottom right hand corner. This is the exhibit. What is the destination MAC address of the Ethernet frame as it leaves the web server if the final destination is PC1? What is the destination MAC address of the Ethernet frame as it leaves the web server if the final destination is PC1? So when the web server sends data back out, and what would be the MAC address of that Ethernet frame? So the answers include these answers which I'm not going to read. So we have four answers and those four answers are associated with some of the locations in here. Like for example, if you look at this, just any with uh, 07 AA, that's this one and 07 BB, that would be this guy and 07 CC, that would be this one. So when the frame leaves the web server, so that's the key information right here. What is the MAC address of the Ethernet frame as it leaves the web server? It's not asking the MAC address when it arrived here. It's asking as soon as this the frame start leaving the web server. So that's 
So why should we the MAC address here? Remember in packet switching, MAC addresses are what? Physical addresses, right? So the destination MAC address is used for the local delivery of Ethernet frames, right? So it's not global delivery, it's a local delivery. Aha! Uh -huh. Then the answer to this question should be obvious. It has to be the 0062F3A07CC. Why? Because that is a MAC address that is immediately in front of the web server. Because MAC addresses are physical addresses that are used for local delivery of Ethernet frames. The low, if we, it's not looking for MAC addresses in the computer, it's not looking for MAC address on the next router. It's looking for the immediate MAC address in right in front of it. So it should be 0060, this one, this MAC address. MAC address of the immediate uh, router right in front of the web server as the frame leaves. So that's the answer to question number 37. Question number 38. What is the auto MDIX feature on a switch? What is the auto MDIX feature on a switch? I already gave you the answer on my previous questions when I try to explain the reasoning behind those questions. What is on auto MDIX, right? So the answers are the automatic configuration of the interface for 10, 100,000 megabyte per second operation. In other words, it's automatically figured out what where, you know, what the, that, you know, the, the speed is. The automatic configuration of an interface for a straight through or a crossover Ethernet cable connection. In other words, you can type any cable, either crossover or a straight through, it will automatically determine how to transmit the data. The automatic configuration of full duplex operation over a single Ethernet copper or K optical cable. In other words, auto switching of duplexing or um, uh, you know single mode type of thing. The other answer is the ability to turn a switch interface on or off according to to accordingly if an active connection is detected. So what is auto MDIX? If you remember from my previous question, this is an easy answer. The answer to this question is auto MDIX is the automatic configuration of an interface for a straight through or a crossover Ethernet cable connection. Recall that my previous question that I showed you with the diagram with cables uh, connecting between two routers uh, and a router and a switch etc i told you you can put any cable you like as long as the auto mdix is turned on most devices modern day including cisco devices shipped out of the box modern day have auto mdix enabled if not uh, you need to look into make sure that you use the uh, the proper uh, cabling so that's the answer to auto mdix because auto mdix allow um, the crossover or straight through Ethernet cable to connect devices regardless of the device on the other end of that connection. Question number 39. What is a characteristic of a LLC sublayer? Again, you need to remember your OSI model and the sublayers to answer this question. And the answers include, it provides the logical addressing required that identifies the device. It provides determination of data according to the physical signaling requirements of the medium. It places information in the frame allowing multiple uh, layer three protocols to use the same network interface and media it identifies software processes that provide services to the physical layer again if you recall that diagram that i already showed you on my previous question the answer to this question is very easy it places information in the frame allowing multiple layers three protocols to use the same network interface and media so that's the answer Question number 40. What action will occur if a switch receive a frame with the destination MAC address all Fs? I already gave you the answer. I think I may have uh, <laughs> may have repeated this question, but the answers are different. You, you can recall there was a same or similar question previously, but the answers were different. So basically we have a frame with a MAC address all Fs in it. So the answers are the switch forward it out uh, all ports except the ingress port. The switch ref uh, re refreshes the timer on that entry. The switch does not forward the frame. The switch sends the frame to a connected router because the destination MAC address is not local. So what's the answer? Well, the answer to this question is the switch forward it to all ports except the ingress port because that all 
um, that MAC address is telling him to is accept the ingress. Ingress mean the incoming port, egress mean the exiting port. So this is another term that Cisco sometimes throw out without telling you what it is. <laughs> so your instructor or study mat should tell you ingress mean incoming port. That's where the frame is coming in. Egress with the E at the front, E instead of I and E at the front is the exiting port. So the switch will forward out uh, to all ports, making all the other ports egress ports, uh, except the ingress ports when everything has Fs in the MAC address. Question number 41. Which two devices commonly affects wireless networks? Which two devices commonly affect wireless uh, uh, networks? Look at this, effect wireless address uh, networks. In other words, impact wireless uh, networks. Blu-ray players, home theaters, cordless phones, microwaves, incandescent light bulbs, external hard drives. It's very easy. Cordless phones and microwaves, why? Because radio frequency interference, also known as RFI, is a big problem with uh, wireless signals. And uh, cordless phones and microwaves use uh, similar radio transmission uh, methods uh, to communicate and that's why you know these are the two answers to that question however I have seen situations where people put access point right next to some weird old incandescent light bulbs that may be doing something with it but for your exams and purposes it's just basically in cordless phones and micro those are the two answers Basically anything that have a using wireless uh, communication medium. Blu-ray players don't do that. Home theaters, depending on if it has a remote control that use microwaves or other some kind of signal that might interfere with it, wouldn't do that. So the answer, the best possible two answers here are cordless phones and microwaves. Question number 42. Which two statements describe the services provided by the data link layer? Choose two. Which two statements describe the services provided by the data link layer. It defines the end-to-end -end delivery addressing scheme. It maintains the path between the source and the destination devices during the data transmission. It manages the access of frames to the network media. It provides reliable delivery through link establishment and flow control. It ensures that application data will be transmitted according to the prioritization and it uh, packages various layer 3 PDUs into frame format that is compatible with the network interface. You just need to pick two out of all of these statements that best describe, you know, uh, what a data link layer, you know, uh, provide for us, right? Remember, you need to know the OSI model and you need to understand how it operates. If you do, the answers are it manages the access of the frame to the network media and it packages various layer 3 PDUs into a frame format that is compatible with the network interface. Those are the two answers. Again, I'm not going to go into depth of this. If you need some information, you can check my lectures. Question number 43. What are two actions performed by a Cisco switch? We need to pick two and the answers include building a routing table that is based on the first IP address in the frame header, using the source MAC address of frames to build and maintain a MAC address table, forward frames with unknown destination IP addresses to the default gateway, utilize the MAC address table to forward frames via the destination MAC address and examine the destination MAC address to add new entries to the MAC address table. Again, if you know how packet switching work, this should be an easy answer. So the answer should be they're using the source MAC address of the frames to build and maintain a MAC address table because that increased the efficiency of packet switching and utilize the MAC address table to forward frames via the destination MAC address because now you have the MAC address table, you can do the next part right here. So those are the answers. Question number 44. What action will occur if a, if a switch receives a frame with a destination MAC address is this? Again, you need to understand what this MAC address means and how MAC addresses are different from each other, such as the broadcasting MAC address, broadcast MAC address, right? If you know that, you should be able to answer this question. So the answers include the switch forwards it out all ports except the ingress port. Switch does not forward the frame the switch sends the frame to 
a connected router because the destination MAC address is not local. The switch shares the MAC address table entry with any connected switches. So the answer to this question, you need to understand how MAC addresses work and the answer is the switch forward it out all ports except the ingress or incoming port. Question number 45. What action will occur if a switch receives a frame that does not have the source MAC address in the MAC address table? The switch refreshes the timer on that entry. The switch shares the MAC address table entry with any connected switches. The switch does not forward the frame. The switch sends the frame to a connected router because the destination MAC address is not local. So what happened if the switch receive the source MAC address Sorry, uh, does not have the source MAC address in their table. What does, what does it do? Well, the switch refreshes the timer on that entry. That's what happened. So, if switch receive a frame that, sorry, that, that does have, so not does not, it, that does have the source MAC address in the MAC address table, it's just gonna refresh the table uh, timer. Remember the MAC address table get refreshed and then the one that no longer in use eventually get discarded. In this case, I read the question wrong. It, it does have the source MAC address in the table and the answer is the switch refreshes the timer on that entry. Question number 46. What OSI physical layer term describes the physical medium which uses electrical pulses? Again, it mentioned the OSI layer here, but you don't need to know the OSI stack to answer this question. It's just simply asking what basically what term describes the physical medium in which the uses electrical pulses? Copper cable, fiber optic cable, air yeah, or good put. Very easy question from Cisco. You should be able to answer copper cable within a couple of seconds. That's the answer because that's what you say electrical passes. Question number 47. Which statement describes an extended star topology? Which statement describes an extended star, star topology? You need to know the topologies, uh, topologies of uh, networking, um, systems or you know networking infrastructure you have to understand how networking infrastructure tough topologies are different to answer this question once you understand that this is an easy easy question the answers are end devices connect to a central intermediate device which in turn connects to other central intermediate devices end devices are connected together by a bus and each bus connect to a central intermediate device each an end system is connected to its respective neighbor via an intermediate device. All the and intermediate devices are connected in a chain to each other. So remember what a star topology look like. It looks like a star, right? So the answer has to be what? End devices connect to a central intermediate device in which turn connect to us other central intermediate devices. So that's the answer. Question number 48. Which characteristic describe crosstalk the distortion of network signal from uh, fluorescent lighting remember i told you that fluorescent lighting could actually distort sometimes it's not usual the distortion of the transmission sorry transmitted messages from uh, signals carried in adjacent wires the weakening of the network signal over long cable length the loss of wireless signal over excessive distance from the access point so remember, we are looking at the term crosswalk, sorry, crosstalk. So if you know what a crosstalk is, the answer should be obvious, which is the distortion of the transmitted message from a signal carried in adjacent wires. So if you have bundled up wires together, electrical signals can interfere with each other. So this is a problem with, uh, you know, Cat5, Cat6 cables, for example, does not cause an issue with uh, fiber optic cables. And the weakening of the signal over long distance, that attenuation, remember that's a signal attenuation which I covered on my previous questions. Question number 49. Which two functions are performed at the LLC sublayer of the OSI data link layer? Which two functions are performed at the LLC sublayer of the OSI data link layer? This one, you need to know the your OSI model and the stack and the sublayers. So the answers include adds layer two control information to network protocol data, places information in the frame that identify which network layer protocol is being used for the frame, performs data encapsulation, controls the network interface card responsible for sending and receiving data on the physical medium, integrates various physical 
technology. So what are the two things, two functions are performed in the LLC sublayer? So that's the question they are asking. So the answers include adds layer to control information to the network uh, protocol data and places information in the frame that identifies which network layer protocol is being used for the frame. And again, you need to know your OSI model. Remember the OSI model? And you also need to know the sub layers in here as well. So application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, physical, that's the main OSI model. But remember the data link layer has LLC sub layer and the max sub layer, right? So that the, those are those, those two, LLC max uh, and the max sub layers. So you need to know that in order to answer this question because it's going into the depth of the, those sub layers. Again, I'm just pointing out that because this is an important two diagrams that you should be familiar with when you are going into your Cisco exams. Question number 50. What action will occur if a switch receives a frame and does not have the MAC address in the MAC table? And now this question does not have, it doesn't have the source MAC address. But the previous question, it did have the source MAC address. What did it did, what did it, what did it do? What did it do, right? So the answers here include the switch refreshes the time on that entry. The switch shares the MAC address table entry with any connected switches. So switch does not forward the frame. The switch add it to the MAC address table associated with the port number. So the switch receives a frame that doesn't have the source MAC address in the MAC address ta table. So what happened in that situation? Well, same thing. The switch refreshes the time on that entry because that's what it does. And uh, uh, switch uh, also, you know, going to do that because that information is already there now. So, I mean, you know, the, the other one is the switch the, the add it to the MAC address tab table associated with the port number as well. But this is what the Cisco, uh, it, it, it can be confusing, but the most correct answer is the switch refreshes the timer on that entry. Now, because it doesn't have the MAC address, I would also argue, even though the Cisco says this is the only answer in this, this is a controversial question, the question number 50, kind of a issue here I have with the Cisco. Cisco is saying this is the only correct answer, but I believe this is also correct in my head. But if some of you have a, why Cisco is claiming this is the only correct answer in this list, uh, please explain it to me in the comment section of this video. I believe because when doesn't when the when the switch doesn't have that information initially, it should actually add it to the MAC address table and associate a port number. So these two answers are right for me, but Cisco says no, it's only this answer is correct. Question number 51. Which statement describes a characteristic of the frame header fields? of the data link layer. Which statement describes a characteristic of the frame header fields of the data link layer? They all include the flow control and logical connection fields. Ethernet frame header fields contain layer three source and destination addresses. They vary depending on protocols. They include information on user applications. Again, if you remember your notes, the answer to this question is they vary depending on protocol. So which statement describe the characteristic of a frame header fields? And that's the answer. Question number 52. This interface allow remote management of a layer two switch. This interface allows remote management of a layer two switch. The aux interface, the console port interface, the switch virtual interface, the first ethernet port interface. So what would what what interface would allow you to do a remote management of a layer two switch? So if you have done your Cisco lab, this should be a very easy question. The answer is the switch virtual interface, also known as SVI, uh, because that is what we use for controlling uh, uh, switches virtually. <clears throat> Looks like I have accidentally repeated the same question twice on question number 52 and 53. That's the same question. So the answer to this one is again, 
which interface uh, allow the remote manageable layer to switch, which is the SVI. So that's the answer. Sorry about that. That's the same question twice. Question number 54. What OSI physical layer term describes the measure of usable data transferred over a given period of time? In other words, you don't need to know again what OSI model is over the stack to answer this question. They're just asking what term describes the measure of usable data transferred over a given period of time? Good put fiber optic cable, air copper cable. Again, <laughs> such an easy question because of the way that the Cisco put together the answer. They didn't even use the word like throughput and etc. etc. They just put good put. So the answer is good put. Why? Every, that's the only answer makes sense too, right? That everything else doesn't make any sense. So sometimes Cisco is very nice. It gives you some answers. Easy, I mean, easy question. So this is one of those. What action will occur if a host receive? So this time, it's not a switch. It's not a router. It's the host. So what action will occur if a host receive a frame with the destination MAC address of all Fs? The host will process the frame. The host forwards the frame to the router. The host sends the frame to the switch to update the MAC address table. The host forwards the frame to all other hosts. Again, if you have studied your Cisco nodes, it's an easier answer, which is the host will process the frame because all of these basically have Fs in every single section of this uh, MAC address. Question number 56. What is the auto MDX feature? I have described this already on my previous questions. So think about it. it. You know, the answer site enables devices to automatically configure an interface to use a straight through or a crossover cable. It enables devices to automatically configure the duplex settings of a segment. It enables devices to automatically configure the speed of its interface. It enables switches to dynamically select and forward method. This exact question worded differently came back uh, previously the only reason I'm putting this here is because I want to give you a variety of way of asking the same question by Cisco so it should be an easy answer so it enables the device to automatically configure an interface to use a straight through or a crossover cable okay, remember like devices unlike devices that's where it come into play question number 57 what OSI physical layer term describe the physical medium that uses the propagation of light very easy question you don't need to know what osi model is you just need to know what medium use the light fiber optic or optical fiber cable good put latency or throughput well optic optic mean light it's very easy fiber optic cable this is one of those easy answers by cisco Question number 58, which two functions are performed at the LLC sublayer of the OSI data link layer? Adds uh, layer two control information to the network protocol data, provides data link layer addressing, enables IPv4, IPv6 to utilize the same network interface and media, implements a trailer to detect uh, transmission errors, provides synchronization between source and the target nodes. So what would be the two answers? Again, if you remember the functions of LLC sublayers in the OSI uh, model, which you have to remember to answer this question, the answer is the adds layer to control information to the network protocol data and enables IPv4 and IPv6 to utilize the same network interface and media. Question number 59, which advantage does the store and forward switching method have compared to the cut through switching method? Remember, store and forward method is a little bit slower. So what are the advantage of using store and forward switching method when compared to the cut through faster switching method, right? Collision detection, frame error checking, faster frame forwarding, frame forwarding using IPv4, layer three and layer uh, four information. Again, if you recall from my previous uh, questions here the answer to this one is the frame error checking because frame error checking allow that a switch that used the saw and forward uh, switching method to perform the error check on an incoming frame by comparing the C sorry FCS uh, value against its um, own FCS uh, calculations after the entire frame is received 
Therefore, it reduces the errors on that frame as a result. So the biggest advantage of a store and forward is the frame error checking. In comparison that to a switch that using the cut through switching method, may it make a quick forwarding of that frame and then uh, it may uh, receive uh, uh, invalid uh, frames or uh, corrupted frames that just get switched through this network uh, as a result of switch, uh, sorry, uh, cut through switching. So that's the advantage of using store and forward method. Question number 60. What OSI physical layer term describes the capacity at which a medium can carry data? Again, this is an easy question without understanding even the OSI uh, stack, but now the Cisco has given us bandwidth, throughput, latency, and good put because some of these answers are pretty close to each other or you might get confused, right? The answer to this question is bandwidth. Don't get confused with throughput and good put. Some of you may get confused between the throughput and bandwidth. Remember the term which the capacity at which the medium carry data is always going to be bandwidth. So that's the answer to that one. Question number 61. What action will occur if a switch receives a frame with the destination MAC address all Fs? Again, I think this is the same question. I don't know why I put there, but again, you can read the answers here. I believe this is the same question. So the switch forward it all out, uh, afford it out all ports except the ingress port. That's the answer. I think I already covered this and that's the answer. I don't know why it got repeated here. Question number 62. A network administrator is connecting two mod modern switches using a straight through cable. So it clearly says it's a modern switch. The switches are new and have never been configured. Which three statements are correct about final results of the connection? So it's a brand new two switches. These network administrators are connecting together using a straight through cable. And you know, what will happen? It never been configured, right? The link between the switches will work at the faster speed that it's supported by both switches. The link between the switches will work as full duplex. If both switches support different speed, they will each work at their own faster speed. The auto MDIX, auto MDIX feature will configure the interfaces, eliminating the need for a crossover cable. The connection will not be possible unless the administrator changes the cable to a crossover cable. The duplex capability has to be manually configured before it can be negotiated. The key here is that it is a two modern switches. Remember I told you in the old days, you had to make sure whether you're gonna use a crossover cable or a straight through cable. In here, you had to use a crossover cable. But because these are two modern switches, you don't have to do most of the configuration out of the box. So the answer should be the link between the switches will work at the faster speed that is supported by the both switches because the lower speed denote the speed of that connection. And the link between the switches will work as full duplex, guaranteed. It will work full duplex if it supports that, uh, you know, methods on both switches. And the auto MDIX feature will configure the interfaces, eliminating the need for the crossover cable, because even though they use a straight through cable in here, in this situation, it will automatically uh, recognize that through the auto MDIX. Again, if you don't remember what auto MDIX is, either you go back on this video and watch my explanation or watch my uh, you know tutorials that I have already covered in my lecture series. Question number 63. What is the purpose of the C, sorry, FCS field in a frame? Again, I have already covered this. To obtain the MAC address of the sending node, to verify the logical address of the sending node, to compute the CRC header for the data field, to determine if errors occurred in the transmission and reception. I covered what is FCS in my previous question, so this should be an easy question to answer even though the question is different. Uh, it should be pretty easy. So the answer to this question should be to determine if the errors occurred in the transmission and reception. Because remember the FCS field is what, if you look at the frame, here you go, this is what it is. So we are near the end, I saw a 63rd question here. So I'm gonna give you, it's, this is what the frame look like, the FCS on the very end. And the FCS frame in the field, what it's gonna do, it's gonna detect the errors in the transmission 
uh, of the receipt frame. And by doing so, it can check against the CRC value within the frame against compare CRC value of the frame and then do that calculation. So it determine if the error occurred in the transmission and reception. That's the primary function of a CF, uh, sorry, FCS field. Question number 64. Which statement is true about CSMA slash CD access method that is used in Ethernet? Which statement is true about CSMA slash CD access method that is used in Ethernet? When a device hears a carrier signal and transmit, a collision cannot occur. A jamming signal causes only devices that cause the collision to execute a back-off algorithm. All network devices must listen before transmitting. Devices involved in a collision get priority to transmit after the back-off period. This is something you should know from studying your lecture notes. Again, you can check my uh, uh, lecture series for CCNA1 on already on my YouTube channel if you don't understand this question. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth into this. The answer is that all network devices must listen before transmitting um, in the CSMA slash CD access method uh, in this particular situation. Not this particular situation, in general, in general. Question number 65, with the use of unshielded twisted pair copper wire in a network, what causes crosstalk within the cable pairs? So if you are using unshielded twisted pair copper wire in a network, what is causing the crosstalk? The magnetic field around the adjacent pairs of wires, the use of braided wires to shield the adjacent wire pairs, the reflection of the electrical wave back from the far end to the cable, the collision uh, caused by two nodes trying to use the media simultaneously. So what is crosstalk? You need to understand that. The crosstalk is what? Well, the crosstalk is type of noise, right? It is an interference that occurs when a signal transmission of a wire interact with another wire. So that interaction happened, why? Because of the magnetic field around the adjacent pairs of wires. So the answer to that question is that. Question number 66. What are three ways that media access control, also known as MAC, is used in networking? So remember, we discussed MAC a little bit in the previous question. So what are three ways we use MAC addresses or MAC? Ethernet utilizes CSMA slash CD. Media access control provides placement of data frames into the media. Contention-based access is also known as deterministic. 802.11 utilizes CSMA slash CD. The data link layer protocols define the rules for access to different media. The network with control access have the reduced performance due to data collision. So which three ways the media access control, like? What is the best answer out of all of these? That's the that they're asking. So the answer is the Ethernet utilizes CDCMA, and um, the media access control provides the placement of data into the frame, and um, data link layer protocols define the rules for access to different media. So those are the three things that a Mac would do. What three term? Uh, sorry, what three items are contained in an Ethernet header and trailer? Source IP address, source MAC address, destination IP address, destination MAC address, error checking information. So you need to pick three items that contain within any Ethernet header. So again, uh, the layer two um, headers contain one. That's what you need to think about in here. So the source MAC address, the destination MAC address, and the error checking information. So those are the things that uh, contain uh, and the, the field contained in layer three protocol is what? So you need to think about layer three and layer two and answer these questions. So the answer would be these three. So to this particular question. Question number 68, a link, sorry, a layer two switch is used to switch incoming frames from a thousand base T or gigabit uh, port uh, to a port connected to a hundred base T network. Which method of memory buffering would work best for this task? Port-based buffering, level one cache buffering, shared memory buffering, fixed configuration buffering. So you just need to think about from a switching point of view, when you have 
you know, packet switching with different speeds. How would you manage that in terms of memory buffering, port based buffering, level one cache buffering, shared memory buffering or fixed configuration buffering? Well, the answer to this question is port based buffering. The reason behind this is that with shared memory buffering, the number of frames stored in the buffer is restricted only by the entire memory buffer and not limited to a single port buffer, right? So this permits larger frames to be transmitted with fewer drops frames. This is important to asymmetric switching, which applies the scenario where the frames being exchanged uh, between ports of different rates. With port-based uh, memory buffering, however, the frames are stored in a queue that is linked to a specific incoming and outgoing ports. So, in other words, there are multiple answers possible here, not just port-based buffering. You can also do shared buffering in here as well, uh, because that is also a possible answer here. So, with, um, with the shared buffering, that also allow the uh, you know similar way of uh, you know the doing um, you know uh, doing this um, you know work this out so the answer to this question there's two answers that is the port based buffering and shared memory buffering here's also an easy question that might get confused during your exam for some of the some of you Let's refer to the exhibit it's an image of a, a terminated end of a cat5 or a cat6 cable and the answer is what is wrong with the display termination? Now, sometimes these images are very clear. So you would be able to know what wires goes where. So you need to know your A and B standards. Remember the termination standard. However, if Cisco provide an image like this, I know right away they're not asking about the order because it's not very clear. But the answer here, the woven copper braided should not have been removed the wrong type of connector is being used, the untwisted length of each wire is too long, the wires are too thick for the connector that is used. Typically, this again, Cisco images are very clear, clear than the image that I have here. Uh, the issue with this one is pretty noticeable, which is the untwisted length of the each wire is way too long. You should not have things sticking out like that. This jacket should be inside the crimp right here. When the crimping is crimping down this part, it should be holding onto this jacket, not to the wires. So that's the answer to this question. So on your exam, your image may be very clear and they might have like a wire configuration op uh, option as the uh, answers in here. In that case, read carefully, watch, read the wires. Uh, in, but if the image is not very clear, you know it's right away. It has to do with something to do with this part. But in this question, question number six, What's wrong with this uh, termination? The untwisted length of each wire is too long. So this is a lab. This is a lab question from Cisco. Question number 17. What OSI physical layer term describe the amount of time, including the delays for data to travel from one point to another? Again, very easy question. Similar question came before. The answer is latency. Question number 71 match the situation with the appropriate use of network media. So you need to match whatever you see on the left hand side to whatever you see on the right hand side. This is a common question you get on Cisco, but typically instead of matching, they will ask you to move these items and put it into right place. Because I can't, I don't want to do that here because this is a PowerPoint slide. So I'm going to give you the answers this way. Uh, so the backbone cabling in, in an enterprise, should be actually i will give you a little bit of time to think about this think about this where these things go so we have the backbone cabling in enterprise guest access in a network uh, or guest access in a network in a coffee shop horizontal cabling structure um, we have the waiting rooms in a hospital we need to create a network there desktop pc in an enterprise office or long haul network so the options we have is a cable copper cables fiber uh, optic and wireless so you just need to put it in, put whatever you see is on the left hand side into these three categories on the right hand side. You can pause this video if you need more time. So here's are the answers. I already gave you the first one, which is the backbone cabling uh, goes to fiber optic. Guest network, most likely wireless. 
we don't want all the guests to have wired plugged into our switches or anything. Horizontal cabling, copper cabling. Horizontal cabling are cabling between, let's say, one room to another, a network closet uh, to the client in a big building, for example. Um, that's called horizontal cabling. Waiting rooms, again, wireless, because it's gonna be guest connecting. Desktop PC in an enterprise, copper cabling, again, CAT5 or CAT6 cables. Long haul networks, that mean you have a network between let's say Calgary and Edmonton, you typically use like fiber optics because it's faster and better, or between data centers. Long haul network could be, because they have like a data center uh, networks, like uh, um, uh, the backbone cabling. Backbone cabling and long haul are the fiber optics. So data centers could be considered as a black backbone cabling, but if it is far away, the data centers could be long haul, long haul network as well. So those, those are the answers. Question number 72, which procedure is used to reduce the eff effect of crosstalk in copper cables? So what do we do to reduce the crosstalk in copper cable? So the answers include requiring proper grounding connections, twisting opposite circuit wires pairs together, wrapping the bundle of wires with metallic shielding, designing a cable infrastructure to avoid crosstalk interference, avoid sharp bends during insulation. So those are the answers. Uh, and what would you think is the answer? <laughs> it's a very simple question if you have done labs. The answer is twisting opposite circuit uh, via pairs together so that will reduce that crosstalk or interference. Question number 73. A network administrator is measuring the transfer of bits across the company backbone for a mission critical financial application. The administrator notices the network throughput appears lower than the bandwidth expected. Which three factors could influence the difference in throughput? Read the question again. If you don't understand, when you have a huge paragraph like this, some people get overwhelmed. Don't panic, just read it. What are the important information here? They're, they're just basically measuring bit across a company backbone, but that's not even really important. What really important here, the administrator notices that the network throughput appear to be lower than the bandwidth. So what causes the throughput to be lower than the bandwidth? So the answers could be the amount of traffic that is currently crossing the network, the sophistication of the encapsulation method applied to the data, the type of traffic that is crossing the network, the latency that is uh, created by the number of network devices that data is crossing, the bandwidth of the WAN connection uh, to the internet, the reliability of the gigabit ethernet interface of the backbone. So think about it. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it because this is a really good question. So you can pause if you want more time. If you are an IT analyst or a frontline IT support person or an IT engineer, like a network infrastructure engineer, this is some, a really good example of something that you do on the job. So answer to this question is the amount of traffic that is currently crossing the network because this is theoretical uh, bandwidth expected versus the current, right, throughput the type of traffic that is crossing the network at the time than which the test was done and the latency that is created by the number of networking devices that is crossing the data, right? That, that the data is crossing. So these are the three answers to this question. This is a good question because throughput usually does not match the specified bandwidth of a physical links due to many, many factors. So when you go to the field, there are many factors that can impact that uh, impact the throughput. So that includes the amount of traffic that going through, the type of data, the latency created by the devices that is uh, connected to the network. So just because of the data sheet or the theoretical bandwidth is one thing, doesn't mean you're gonna have the same throughput when you are testing networks uh, in the field. So those are the three answers. This is a good question if you go, want to go into the frontline IT field. Question number 74. Which two functions are performed at the LLC sublayer of the OSI data link layer. Which two functions are performed at the LLC sublayer of the OSI data link layer? Choose two. So again, you need to know what the OSI uh, stack look like. So the answers include enable IPv4 and IPv6 to utilize the same network interface and media, add layer to control information to the network protocol data, integrates various physical technologies, implement a trailer to detect transmission errors, provides synchronization between source uh, and the uh, target nodes. 
again, you should know your LLC sublayers in the OSI model to answer this question. And the easy, it will be an easy answer for you. It enable IPv4, IPv6 utilization. I have already covered this previously and it adds the layer two control information to the network protocol data. So those are the two answers for question number 74. Question number 75, what action will occur if a switch receive a frame and does not have the source MAC address in the MAC table? Again, this is, uh, this is kind of a repeat question. So the answers are the switch refreshes the time on that entry. And as I already have covered this type of similar question, the answer to this answer question is the switch refreshes the time on that entry. You may have noticed by now that some of the questions have kind of repeated. It may be because the Cisco have uh, repeated questions when I was going through them. I just realized that while I was doing the video, but I will just leave it as it is because it gives you a good refresh of some of the information over and over. So it can make it easier for you to write the exam as well. So it will go to the back of your head, right? So I'll leave it as it is. I won't chop this video or anything like that. You can jump over YouTube, you know, uh, if you want if you don't want to look at a specific question or you can pause the video so that you can spend more time on the questions as well so that's the end of our ccna 1 version 7 module uh, for uh, you know and up uh, exam questions and answers that i just covered uh, again remember to go back to my module uh, 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 lectures for CCNA 1 introduction to network or the others like the CCNA 2 and CCNA 3 that are already posted on my YouTube channel if you want to get in-depth uh, information on the concepts that I have covered today in this uh, exam uh, go, go over if you haven't watched my CCNA 1 version 7 module 1 to 3 exam questions and answers they are already posted on my YouTube channel please go ahead and watch them uh, that will help you with the module 1 to 3 exam uh, and that's everything for today if you like these type of videos and lectures please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel until next time thank you so much and have a nice day